Before we begin our award ceremony today, we would like to acknowledge the passing of our longtime CAP board member, Mark Potler. Mark passed away unexpectedly last weekend. His wisdom and guidance and humor were just a few of the reasons that Mark will forever leave his impression on the CAP board. For those of you who were fortunate enough to see Mark present a CAP award, you saw his fondness and genuine compassion for our men and women in blue. We leaned on Mark for his expertise and experience, and he was an invaluable member of our board. Mark was a graduate of DU Law School, and some highlights of Mark's career include being the director of the Colorado Organized Crime Strike Force, a deputy district attorney for more than 28 years, and most recently, Mark spent 11 years as a municipal judge in Lakewood and Mountain View, Colorado. CAP board member Linda Tafoya shared this about Mark. Some people in life demand respect, and others earn our respect. Mark absolutely earned our respect, and we will miss him greatly. The CAP board would like to ask for a moment of silence in Mark's memory. Thank you. Citizens Appreciate Police, also known as CAP, honors officers of the Denver Police Department who provide service to the community above and beyond the call of duty. Formed in 1978 by Mayor Bill McNichols and District Attorney Dale Tooley, CAP is a nonprofit organization whose intention is to promote awareness within the community of the dedication displayed regularly by members of the Denver Police Department. The mission of the CAP Board is to seek out and publicly acknowledge these deserving officers. The CAP Award consists of a plaque and a pen. This pin is the only civilian <coughs> awarded pin to, to allowed to be worn on a Denver police officer's uniform. Presentations of these awards take place four times a year. To date, more than 550 members of the Denver Police Department have received the CAP Award. All right, Beth, would you like to come up and get us started? Thank you. And thank you for those wonderful words about Mark. Even not having Mark physically here, he still will be a very hard act to follow. So please give me a little grace when I try to live up to the standard he set for all of us. And with that, I would like to start with Officer Montoya, Anthony Montoya. If you could please join me up here, that would be terrific. Hello. Good morning again. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Lieutenant James Ballinger, Commander Quality, to make it. That's all right. We're thrilled to have you here. Thank you. All righty. So, back in November of last year, Officer Montoya was working at the desk at District 4 when a woman came in with two children. The woman, who was deaf, was from Arizona and was traveling with her kids on a little mini vacation in Colorado. She was having help with, from her grandmother to fund this excursion and that help was coming in the form of one of those little cards from Walmart that you supposedly can load with ease and the recipient can access it with ease and carry on with whatever they're doing. Unfortunately, on the day this woman came into the station, the Walmart card was not cooperating. She presented Officer Montoya with documentation of the numerous attempts that her mother had made trying to help get them home to Arizona and it absolutely was not working. She came into the station to ask for assistance. Officer Montoya spent the time to call around District 4 to various churches. Oftentimes churches are able to help with emergency funds, but you really have to work at it to scrape together enough to accomplish your goal. He was able to come up with enough information to give to this woman, all the while communicating with her in a more interesting way than I'm communicating with you now. She was able to read lips, and he wrote notes. So you wrote things out, contact information, addresses, whom to contact. And he came up with quite a list to get her on her way back to Arizona. To make her plight even more dire, she was out of gas. 
So she was given, thank you very much, of his own volition, he gave her $20 to fill up her tank and get her on her way to see the churches and get herself and her kids safely home to Arizona. Officer Montoya's supervisor stated that he is an exemplary officer that always goes above and beyond to help the citizens of Denver as well as his fellow officers. And he does this all while maintaining a positive and energetic persona. And I can tell you from my brief interlude of working with Officer Montoya, where I gave him yes, no, yes, no kinds of things to do over a very short amount of time. He never lost his temper with me. He was always polite and was a doll to, uh, pleasure to work with. <laughs> Sorry, I'm showing my age. Anyways, I am really, really happy to be able to present this award to you. As well as the pin. So there you are. And there you are. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Lieutenant, thank you for being here. Can you go ahead and come up, please? Good morning, everyone. Can I have Officer Hewitt um, come up front and hang out with me for a few moments? <laughs> okay. You as nervous as I am? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So back on October, 20, uh, October 7th of 2023, District 1 Officer Jordan Hewitt was at a convenience store in the 1400 block of North Perry Street. She encountered a woman who was visibly upset. When she spoke with the woman, the officer learned that she had recently lost her debit card and was out of gas and needed to get home to Broomfield. Needing no more explanation, Officer Hewitt used her own money to buy gas for the woman so she could make it home. That's awesome because we know how expensive gas is. I wanted to read um, a little part of what um, her sergeant sent in um, that really touched my heart. He says, Officer Hewitt is one of the most valuable team members. She consistently strives for excellence. I am fortunate to have such a valuable and compassionate team member and officer of the Denver Police Department. Sincerely, Sergeant Jason Duran. So it's my honor to present this award to you and your pin. There you go, and there's your pin. Thank you. You're welcome. Margaret, could you come up, please? Good morning. I'd like to call up Officer Armando Jaramillo, Jr. and Officer Frankie Archuleta. <clears throat> On September 13th, 2023, District 1 Officer Armando Jaramillo and Officer Frankie Archuleta responded to a call for service in the area of West 17th Avenue and North Sheridan Boulevard. After a young father called requesting assistance for him and his nine-year-old son. After learning about the father's efforts to secure other services to no avail, the officers used the district credit card to obtain a hotel room for the pair. The father also mentioned that he and his son had not eaten for an extended period of time. Upon hearing this, Officer Jaramillo used his own money to purchase dinner for the family before giving them a ride to their hotel. The father was extremely grateful for the officer's compassion and generosity. And thank you so much.
And now I'd like to call up Officer Kyle Tennyson. You could have brought your son up with you. <laughs> He's just laughing at that. On October 8th, 2023, District 6 Officer Kyle Tennyson responded to the 500 block of East Colfax on a report of an assault. While he was there, he was flagged down by a father and his nine-year-old son. The father explained that he was experiencing homelessness and that he and his son were turned away from an area shelter. He went on to explain that he had an appointment in the upcoming days with Denver Human Services, but needed a safe place for him and his son to stay in the meantime. Officer Tennyson used the District 6 credit card to secure a hotel room for the pair. However, the young boy was still experiencing some levels of stress due to being hungry. Officer Tennyson learned that the small family had not eaten all day. He used his own money to purchase food for both of them and then gave them a ride to the hotel. Detective Alicia Martinez and Officer Christopher Velardi to come up front, please. It's not your first time up here, is it? <laughs> All right. On July 5th of 2023, District 4 then Officer Alicia Martinez and Officer Christopher Velardi responded to the 4700 block of South Wadsworth Boulevard on report of elder abuse. When Detective Martinez and Officer Velarde arrived, they met with the caller who told them that an elderly female was trying to move into their rented apartment. The elderly female victim had been living with her adult son, but was advised that it was no longer safe to stay with him. On this evening, the son drove the elderly victim to a location and dropped her off, telling the renter that she was their problem now. The elderly woman was left without money, credit cards, or transportation and was now essentially stranded with no other options for housing. Due to the victim's age and medical condition, a shelter was not a viable option. Detective Martinez and Officer Velarde made the decision to take the female victim to a hotel with funds provided with, by department resources. After speaking in more detail with the victim, Detective Martinez and Officer Velarde discovered that she had not eaten all day. Acting with empathy and compassion, Detective Martinez and Officer Velarde took it upon themselves to order and pay for room service from the hotel restaurant with their own money so that she wouldn't go hungry for the evening. For this act of compassion and empathy, we would like to recognize you, Detective Martinez, and you, Officer Velarde, with a cap award. Good morning. I have the uh, honor to present Detective Michael Felsosi this morning, and I will be reading what was presented to us um, a couple weeks ago. On September 17, 2023, Denver police officers received a call regarding a stolen truck that belonged to a family living out of state. When their truck was stolen, it had all the family's belongings and traveling belongings inside. Detective Felsosi took the case 
The stolen truck was recovered, but the family's belongings were not. Detective Felsosi discovered that another vehicle was stolen around the same time as the truck and that it was recovered with several items in it that did not belong to that owner. Detective Felsosi responded to the house where the second stolen car had been returned and with permission entered that vehicle. Detective Felsosi identified the items that belonged to the family whose truck was stolen from out of state and he went out of his way to make sure that all the belongings were returned. Detective Felsosi's actions were so impactful that the truck owner wrote the following to Chief Ron Thomas. And I'm quoting here for the, from what was uh, sent to Chief Thomas. On the last afternoon of the family get together, my pickup was stolen along with three of my kids' stuff. Denver is huge along with your department. My daughter's computer had been stolen along with two of my son's things. Two of his sons are police officers. We got the pickup back and the kids' computers, along with two suitcases that were untouched. I bring this to your attention because I want to commend Detective Felsosi, who works in auto theft. Not only did he catch the bad guys, he was instrumental in retrieving my kids' stuff. I was very impressed with his work ethic and professionalism and encouraged that there really are good people who care. I would ask you to help me out with honoring Detective Mike Felsosi. Put Mike on the spot. You want to say something? Oh, geez, are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> See, nobody else did that. I was gonna get that. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Thanks, man. Um, <laughs> it's just an honor to work for this department. I have to say, and I appreciate all of you that came today. Um, I've been a cop for probably going on 34 years now, and um, feels like day one. I'm not burned out. I love it. I love. Uh, Denver. Um, I've been through some things in the past through my 34 years and um, um, with, with the help of friends and family um, and the family of my blue brothers and sisters of Denver PD. I just I'm ecstatic to be here um, and to Mark Potler. Um, I adored him dearly. I miss him um, so much. Uh, he was a great guy. Um, but, you know, to all the young guys out there, I guess everybody's younger than me now in here, but, uh, um, you know, you go through life with some regrets, but you try to um, limit them. Uh, you try to do the best you can every day, and uh, you'll plug through and um, try to be as happy as you can and um, enjoy your life. Don't work too much uh, off-duty, because that, that'll take care of your... your uh, days off. But anyway, um, if, if you uh, come to work every day and try to be happy, and uh, it becomes a habit. And uh, hopefully that's what I, I give to everybody. And I uh, just uh, I love being here. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you for that. a recruiter chief uh, <laughs> I'm ready to reenlist <clears throat> um, while Christy uh, finds the commendation there it is I would just like to um, thank you say that these officers are absolutely remarkable the same type of officers we see uh, uh, every ceremony that um, one of the ways I uh, look at them is if I was a victim of a crime, I really hope somebody like them would show up. And there are hundreds of them out there, fortunately. Uh, let's see, how about young officer Kim? Could you 
come up? Um, while Mike is coming up, um, I just wanted to say that uh, we all miss Mark Potler. Nice to see you. Uh, he really was a remarkable guy. He loved uh, the police, his family, God, not necessarily in that order. Um, and uh, he reminded me often at these ceremonies, <clears throat> one of uh, the things these officers live is what um, St. Francis of Assisi said 500 years ago, which is why you can do good. And Mark used to uh, say that he knew that was accurate because he was there when St. Francis said it. <laughs> also, Mark holds the distinction of being one of the few lawyers ever allowed into heaven. Um, so hopefully you can cut that out. Um, so we have here uh, Officer Michael Kim on December 4th, 2023, District 2 Officer Michael Kim responded to the 4400 block of East 12th on a report of a disturbance. When officers arrived on scene, they encountered a man who was refusing to leave the area. The complainants did not want to press charges and the man just asked for a ride to a different part of the city. Not only did Officer Kim provide the man with a courtesy ride, during their exchange he also learned that the man had not eaten and stopped to buy him a meal before dropping him off. Back when dinosaurs roamed the earth and I was working in District 2, uh, my wife would give me $2 a night to eat on um, <clears throat> because the rest went to diapers and formula and so I suspect uh, that some of these officers that are paying for meals um, are eating tuna fish at night from 7-Eleven or not eating at all. So uh, Mike, thank you very much for what you do for the department. Um, would you like to say a word? You have to keep it to 20 minutes. <laughs> Uh, it's a tough act to follow the detective, but uh, thank you everybody for being here. Um, I'm going on my 20th year in law enforcement, but uh, I've only been at DPD for about two years now, and uh, I don't regret the change whatsoever. And my wife taking pictures of me in the back as a captain with the Denver Sheriff's Department, so uh, we've been kind of part of the Denver family for as long as I can remember, and uh, I'm just happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stand up. It's my wife, Michelle. Nice to have you here. How about your sergeant? Is your sergeant? Uh, my sergeant's not here. Commander Aragon, my district commander, uh, Lieutenant Curtis, Lieutenant Mallow, and Lieutenant Costigan, I believe, are all here. I, I don't know if anybody else from District 2 is here. Is commander Aragon really a whip cracker. <laughs> just, just horrible. I, I, I wouldn't put you on the spot. I get along great with him. So. <laughs> There's one, Carlos. <laughs> Chief Thomas was not able to be here with us today, um, but here representing him is Deputy Chief Montoya. Would you like to come up and say a few words, please? Well, good morning. Um, Mike, there is one guy on the job older than you. <laughs> right but anyway, uh, I, again, I want to I wanna thank everybody um, that came, the family, the officers, uh, command that comes out to support these things. I especially want to thank uh, the CAP board for keeping this rolling for 46 years. This is really important, this, this type of uh, uh, attention that it brings to the department. Um, we go to award ceremony all the time where, you know, you're getting the awards for all the TV stuff, all the heroic stuff, and you pin medals on the chest. And those are great events. They really are. But these events are the ones that are untold. Uh, things like this happen every day. Uh, being on this job, I, I used to see it. I know that the compassion that the Denver police officers that put on these uniforms have, the compassion for people, um, 
and it's always it's always been that way. That's why I'm so proud to be a member of this Denver Police Department. But the the impacts that you made, the stories we're here today, these are the ones that resonate with people. These are the ones that stick with people. They'll always remember that moment. They'll always remember the Denver Police Department because of that act of kindness. And those are the important ones. Those are the ones that build the bridges and, and help us you know, remain at a high status with the community as we should be. So again, uh, I wanna thank everybody. I wanna thank uh, the officers for your kindness and your generosity and uh, the people that took the time to, to recognize them, the citizens and the supervisors that take that extra strip to write these up and get them uh, recognized. So very important and I wanna thank everybody for being here. Appreciate it. All right, uh, a quick note. Um, uh, a quick note, um, we are gonna ask all of our recipients uh, for as soon as we uh, wrap up the ceremony, if you could please just briefly step outside for a real quick picture. We'd like to have all of our recipients with their awards outside um, briefly for a picture and then we can come right back inside. Um, we hope as we honor our award recipients today, we also indirectly honor all the numerous untold stories of our Denver police officers who serve our community above and beyond the call of duty daily. The CAT Board would like to extend our gratitude to all our dignitaries and guests for attending today's ceremony. We congratulate all of today's nine award recipients. We sincerely appreciate your above and beyond service to our community. We would also like to acknowledge all the dedicated Denver police officers. As you go about your day-to-day -day duties, we want you to know we recognize the risks you face daily, the sacrifice you stand ready for, and your unwavering commitment to serve and protect all those who call Denver home. We want all the men and women who as a whole that make up the Denver Police Department to know, we see you, we appreciate you, and we need you. From our cat board to all of you, thank you for your service. This concludes today's ceremony.